Hi, it's Elliot Michael from Rumble Seat Music, and we're here with the guys from Guitar.com. So I've been on the road as a musician since I'm 16. Um, back in about 89, 90, kind of took a break. And my friend came over and he said, why don't you open a guitar store? I said, no fucking way. I've never worked in my life, you know, as a real job. So finally, about three months later, he goes, look, I'll give you eight months free rent, whatever you need. But I said, okay, I'll do it. So I did it as a joke. And then all of a sudden, things started happening. It got bigger and bigger. And then I bought a building next door. And it became what it is pretty much today. So I was trying to think of names of stores. And I didn't want to use Michael's Music or Elliot's Blah. I think that's a little cheesy. So I was thinking, you know, old cars, old guitars, old things. So an old car has a rumble seat. And I was married to a different woman at that time. And I said, and I hated her. So this is, you know, I said, what do you think of the name Rumble Seat? She goes, I hate it. I said, done. So I've been doing this now for 25 years, I think, something like that. And a lot of collections, a lot of people I know from the music business that I've, you know, from 30, 50, 40, whatever years ago, still call me, buy guitars, sell me guitars. People call it collections, I buy collections. We go to guitar shows, we buy guitars. So it just comes in and goes out from different areas. This is history. I mean, basically, I mean, this was owned by early Fleetwood Mac, Peter Green, Darren Kerwin, used on all their albums, live stuff. Um, it was in Ronnie Lane's studio. So it was used by bands like The Who, Led Zeppelin, and a ton of other bands that Ronnie Lane recorded. We bought about four or five guitars made for artists. This one was b believed to be sent back to Jimmy Page a few times, having him try it until he liked what came out of it. So it's got all the basic things like Jimmy Page's guitar with pull pots, push pull pots. It's got the buttons on, underneath, which make this guitar sound incredible. They were just doing uh, the Jimmy Page Sun Dragon, which is an exact copy of his amp that he used in the Yardbirds and Led Zeppelin. So basically, they only made 50 of these. This is number 25, signed by Jimmy Page on the back. This was Jimmy Page's fuzz tone that he used in the Yardbirds. And basically, it comes with some documentation here. This is rented to Jimmy Page and the Yardbirds for six, six shows around Weston. I'm going to take my glasses off. Weston, Pennsylvania. This guitar was Joe Bonamassa's guitar that he used at the Royal Albert Hall in 2009. And that's a show that Eric Clapton came out and joined him. This is his guitar that he played for a long time, and then he gave it to me as a gift, as a present. It's got the original slide that he used with it when he played. And again, this is another piece of American history signed to me. And he didn't want, he didn't want to take a, a real one on the road. So I basically told him, take my personal 59. And he said, I can't do it because I don't want to feel responsible. I said, OK, take my 59 Les Paul, and pay me a dollar a week for the rest of your life. So he took the guitar, but he, he didn't do the dollar a week. He paid it off real quick. Color of the guitar, I'm not really sure, but he calls it candy apple blue, which I'm not sure if that's the right color, or, but that's what he calls it. And that's just a basic uh, rosewood neck on there. But it's got that 59 big profile neck. As well. Seat Music, where I work, and uh, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite guitars in the store. So this guitar is really, really unique because it was made by Tony Zemitis, which is exclusive enough, but it was actually made for the band The Faces, my favorite band. Um, so it's got Ronnie Wood and Ronnie Lane's name on the inside, and it's one of only four he did with the metal inlaid dragons, and uh, each one was a little different, so it's really one of a kind. From the letters we have that came with it from Tony, of course, he always uh, made them to each individual player's specs. So 
This neck is kind of what I would imagine to be like a 50s Strat kind of profile. So you can kind of tell Ronnie Wood, who plays a lot of Strats, would probably have said he wanted something like that. Um, it's got two humbuckers, but they're both splittable to single coils, and you can go out of phase in the middle. And then other than that, as far as I know, everything on it is, uh, you know, unique to, to this guitar. I mean, the Dragon is, is a Danny O'Brien engraved piece of metal. Um, of course, the beautiful artwork that's on all those Zemitis guitars. Um, it's solid mahogany, and I mean, it's not a lot of bells and whistles. It's kind of a slab of wood, but man, it sounds great.